Hey, we're back with part three of the Knight's Tale um, interlinear translation off of the Harvard website. I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. Um, I'm going to read through the uh, prescribed passage for today first um, to, the, to the best of my ability in the Middle English, and then I'm going to um, discuss what we've read at the end and talk about the assignment at the end. So let's... Um, Let's get started here. Uh, line 1881. It men would them at negligence if ye for yet to tell them the dispenser of Theseus that goes so busily to marken up the list royally that switch a noble theatre as it was, e thou were saying in this world there nas, the circuit and meal was a bolter, while the stone and on the ditched all with altar, round was the sharp and manner of compass. Full of the grace, the heat of sixty pass, that when a man was set on own degree, he let not his fellow for to see. Eastward there stood a gut of marble wheat, westward reeked switch another in, in the opposite. On short the two concluding switch a plaza was known in earth as in so little spasa, for in the land there was no crafty man, that geometry or arithmetic can ne portrayor, ne carver of images, the Theseus, ne yafim mate in images, the theatre, for to marken and devisa, and for to dun whose reaped and sacrifice he aced half upon the get above, in worship of Venus, the goddess of lava, don mat, don mark an altar and an oratory, and on the gut westward in memory of Mars, he marketh hath reaped switch another, that cost largely of gold a father, and northward in the turret of the wall, of alabaster, wheat, and red coral, an oratory rich for to say, in worship of Diane of Chastity. Hath Theseus done wrought in noble wise, but yet had he for yeaten for to the visa, the noble carving on the portraitures, the sharp, the countenance, and the figures, that were in this oratory's tray. Fierced in the temple of Venus, Maestro C, rooked on the rooked, actually it's rooked on the wall, for piteous for for piteous to behold her, the broken slaps, the sickest colder, the sacred terrors, the woman, the womanting, the fiery strokes of the desiring, that love servants in his leaf enduring, the oaths that hear covenants assuring, pleasance and hope desire for hardiness, beauty and law and youth. Uh, bothery, riches, charms and force, lacings, flattery, dispense, busyness and jealousy, that wearing of yellow golds a garland, and a cuckoo sitting in her hand, faced instruments, carols and dances, loosed in array and all the circumstances of loaf, which that ye reckoned and reckon shall, be ordered what painted on the wall, and more than ye can make of Mansion, for soothly all the mouth of chick, uh, Citheron, Citheron. There Venus hath her principal dwelling, dwelling, uh, was shored on the wall in portraying, with all the garden and the lostiness, not was for yet in the portal illness, ne Narcissus the fair of your agon, ne yet the folly of King Solomon, ne yet the great strength of Hercules, the enchantments of Medea and Celsius, ne of Turnus with the, with the hardy fierce courage, the rich Crassus, Cantif in Salvage, thus may ye seen that wisdom ne richesse, beauty ne slate, uh, slate, strength ne hardiness, ne may with Venus hold champartea, for as her least the word, than may she gaya. Lo, all these folks so caught were in her lass, till they for woeful off sail, alas. Sufficient here examples one or two, and though he could reckon a thousand more, the statue of Venus, glorious for to say, was naked flating in the large sea, and for the naval dawn all covered was, with wavas grain and bricked as any glass, a citula in her right hand had a share, and on her head for seemly for to say, a rose garden fresh and well smelling, above her head hildo was flickering. Before her stood her son Cupido, upon his shoulders wingers had he too, and blind he was, as it is often saner, a bow he bore, and arrows bricked and cana. 
We should not as well ich tell you all the portraiture that was on the wall within the temple of Mictimas the Red, or painted was the wall in length and bread, leak to the estress of the grisly plaza that heaked the great temple of Mars and Thrasa, in thilke called Frosty Region, thereas Mars hath his sovereign mansion. Fierce on the wall was painted a forest, in which there dwelleth neither man ne best, with knotty, canary, barren trays, older, of stubs sharp and hideous to beholder, in which there ran a rumble in a swell, as though a storm beshowed burst in every bow, and downward from a hill under a benta, and stood the temple of Mars army, army potenta. Rooked was of burned steel, of which the entree was long and straight and ghastly for to say, and thereof came a raj and switch of vase, that it made all the gat for to raise, that it made all the gat for to raise, it's probably raise, and thorough came a raj and switch of Asa, that it made all the gat for to raise. The northern licked in all the door is shown, for window on the wall ne was there known, through which men meeked in any light discerne, the door was all of adamant to turna, it clenched over thwart and ended long with ear and tough, and for to mark it strong, Every pillar the temple to sustain was tongret of iron breeked and shena. There so he first the dark imagining of felony and all the compassing of cruel Eric, reed as any glader, and picapus, and ache the pale dreader, and smillery with the kneef under the cloaker, the shape brenning with the black smoker, the treason of the murdering in bed, the open wearer with wounds all be bled, Contact with body Kenneth and Sherp Manas, all full of cheerking was that sorry plaza. The slayer of himself yet see I the so either. Um, his heart blood hath bathed all his hair, the nal ye driven in his show the nicht, the cold death with mouth gasping up ricked, a mist of the temple sat mischance, with discomfort and sorry countenance, yet so he woodness laughing at his raja. Armed complaint, oath these and fierce oath raja, the carrying in the busk with throat ye corva, a thousand slain and not of quam ye strova, the tyrant with a prey before ye raft, the tone destroyed there was no thing left, yet so he brent the ship is hop stairless, the hunt strangled with his wheeled berries, the soul freighted with the chill ricked in the cradle, the cook is scarded for all his long laddle, nooked was for yetin be the infortune of Marta, the cartler overridden with his carta, under the wheel for lo he lay a dome, there, there were also of Mars division, the barber and the butcher and the smith, therefore yet in sharp swerders on his stith, and all above the painted in a tour, saw I saw e conquest sitting in great honour, with a sharp sword over his head, hanging or the subtle twin his thread. Depainted was the slaughter of Julius, of great to Nero and Antonius, I'll be that thilke team they were unborn. Yet was her death depainted there before, by manacing of Mars wicked by figura, so was it shewed in that portrayer, as as is depainted in the stairs above, who shall be slain or else dead for lover. Sufficeth own example in stories older, he might not reckon him all, though he would. The statue of Mars upon the carta stood, armed, armed, and looked grim as he were wood, and over his head there shining two figures of stars that been clapped in scripturas, that un puela and the other rubios, this god of armors was arrayed thus, a wolf that stood before him at his fate, with ean red, and of a man he ate, with subtle penance was depainted this story, in redolting of Mars and of his gloria. No to the temple of Diana the Chasta, as shortly is he can, he will me hasta, to tell you all the description, the panted being the walls up and down of hunting and of shamfast chastity. There so he ho, woeful Callistope, when that Dian aggrieved was with her, was turned from a woman to a bearer, and after was she made the Lord a star, thus was it painted, he can say you no fair. Uh, her son is eke a star, as men may say, there so a dina, a uh, turned to a tray, he mean not the goddess Diana, but Peneus' doctor, uh, which that heat dana. This is uh, Daphne is an Apollo and Daphne.
Um, we can see this in the interlinear translation. There are many, many allusions in here. We'll get to um, some of this at the end. Otherwise, this would just be exhaustive. Uh, 2065. There so i aktion and hart i maket, for vengeance that he so dian al naket. E so how that his hands have him caught, caught, and frightened him for that they knew him not, not, and frightened him for that they knew him not. It painted was a little further more, how Atalanta hunted the wheeled boar, and Medagra and many other more, for which Dian rooked him car and woe, their soul imani another wonder story, the which me list ne drawn to memory. This goddess of a heartful he sit, with small hounds all about her feet, and underneath her feet she had a moon, waxing it was and showed one soon, and the gold the green her statue clothed was, with bow and hand and arrows and a cast, her iron cast she full low adorned, their Pluto hath his dark region, a woman providing was here before, but for her child so long was unborn. For piteously Lucina gan she calla, and said, Help, for thou must best of Allah, well could he pant and leaf thee with that it wrought with many a floor, and he the hue is bought the. Now been this listed mad, and Theseus, that at his great cost arrayed thus, the templus in the theatre ever dell, when it was done him licked wonder well, but stint he wool of Theseus a little, and spake of Palamon, and of Arcita. The day approacheth of her returning, that ever it should an hundred canictus bring, it took the battle to Darren, as it you told her, until Athenus, her coven for to hold her, hath every each of him brought an hundred canictus, well armed for the wear in all rictus, and sickerly there trod many a man that never is sithen that the world be gone. As for to speak of connicthood of her hand, as fair as God hath marked sea or land, nas of so few, so noble a company, for every wicked that loveth chivalry, that water, uh, and water his thanks, his thankus, and wolder his thankus, hana passant nama, hath prayed that he meeked been of that gamma, as well was him that thereto chosen was, for if there fill tomorrow switch cas, ye know ye can know and well that every lusty knicked that loveth paranors and hath his meeked, were in England or elsewhere they would her thanks willing to be there, to fichte for a lady benedicity, if it were lusty seat for her to, uh, if it were lusty seat the for to see. I lost it. It were a lusty seat for to say. On the rick to so fared in there with Palamon, with him there went in knicks many on, some would been armed in harbogion, and in a breastplate that, and a light chipon, and some would have a pair plat as larger, and some would have a pusa shield or a tarja, some would be armed on his legus wheel, and so and have an ox, and some a massa of steel. There is no newer geese that is not old. Um, I'm going to break this right now for those of you that are um, working on the video. We need that line. <laughs> um, the idea that there's no new fashion that is not an old fashion that needs to be in the title cards. Um, specific people I'm talking to you. I'm not going to name names on YouTube. Um, but that's really, really important for the uh, interpretation that we put together of this. Okay, I'm going to keep going for now. Uh, 2126. Uh, Armed with they, as ye have, told, have you told, average after his opinion. Their master seen coming with Palamon, uh, ligurge himself the great the king of Thras, uh, Thrasa, but it is Thrace. Black was his beard and manly was his fasa. Kiss, uh, what is this? The circles of his eyne in his heed, they glowin betwixt in yellow and reed, and leak a griffin look at here about her, with kimp hills on his brow stotter, his limb is great, his bronze hard and stronger, his shoulders broader, his arms round and longer, and as the geese was in his country, for here upon a char of gold stood hair, with four wheat balls in the trice. Instead of coat armor over his harness, with nails yellowing and bricked as any gold, he had a bare skin coal black for old. His long hair was keemed behind his back, as any raven's feather it shone of for black, a wreath of gold arm great of huge wicta, upon his head set full of stones bricta, of fiend of rubies and of diamonds, upon his char there went in white alons. Twenty and more as great as any steel, 
Uh, to hunt an at the leon or the deer. Catch my breath here for a second. <laughs> uh, 2151. And followed him with most fast bonda, a collard of gold and thorets filled ronda, an hundred lords had he and his rota, armed full well and heart stern and stota. With Arsata in stories as Menfinda, the great Emetrius, the king of Inda, upon a, st a staid bed trapped in stale, covered in cloth of gold, dear per well, come riding lick the god of armus marks. His coat arm was cloth of tars, cultured with pearls quit and round and greater. His saddle was of brent gold noob ibeta, a mantelet upon his shoulder hanging, 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 eh? Trying to get that terminal E in there. Hanging it. Uh, braidful of rubies, red as fear, sparkling it. That's a tough couplet. <laughs> At least it is for me. Uh, 2165. His crease by hair like ringes was Yerona. On that was yellow and glittered as the sona. His nose was high, his eye breathed citrine. His lips ronda, his color was sanguine. A few frankens in his face she spread her. Betwixt and yellow and somewhat black, he mender, and asked the lion he wa uh, he his looking caster. Of feed and twenty year his age he caster. His beard was well begone for to springer, his voice was as a trump thunderinger. Upon his head he weared of Lara Grena, a garland fresh and lusty for to Sena. Upon his hand he bar for his didut, an eagle tam. We got a, we actually have a well, they're putting the comma in there. It wouldn't have been there in the manuscript, but um, an eagle tama as any lily wheat. Yeah, it probably does need the terminal e. So the reason I'm I, I'm trying to be a little bit more precise with the terminal e, but I'm also going at this quickly because we have these time constraints. Um, we lose the meter if we don't get the terminal e right. We should actually have um, iambic pentameter with maybe a um, a week ending uh, here or there. Um, there was an 11 line syllable close to the beginning, but uh, Chaucer, of course, um, generally writes in iambic pentameter and in heroic couplets. We will get to see, um, actually, you guys won't get to see this because we're just doing Knight's Tale, but if we were, um, if we were looking at the Man of Law's Tale, for example, we would get to see Rhyme Royal, or if you were reading um, Troilus and Cressida, um, or Crusade, if you prefer, Troilus and Crusade, uh, we um, we would get to see some rhyme royal. Um, in in either case, we uh, we have this um, ten syllables per line, and we have that bum 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 bum, just like we would have in a in Shakespeare. If you guys remember um, looking at a um, Stephen Fry's the um, the Ode Less Traveled. Um, some of the uh, uh, Canterbury Tales was, was actually in the uh, iambic pentameter section. But if we, uh, if we lose the terminal E, or if we don't pronounce things correctly, we lose the meter, uh, which is why we're um, bothering to, uh, to read this in Middle English to begin with. Um, also to you know, get used to the uh, language and eventually not need this um, interlinear translation that we see at the bottom. Okay, um, so where did I get stuck? Scanning it now. I think I'm on 2179. On hundred lords had he with him there, all arms save her headers in all guerra, full richly in all manner thinges, full richly in all manner thinges. You see how I need the second syllable on that alla in order to, to meet the meter? Um, and you pronounce every syllable that you can see when you're attempting to pronounce uh, Middle English. Um, but sometimes the, uh, the the last E is suppressed. The last E, the terminal E, um, shows up at the end of the line or where there is a break. And that's why that comma tossed me for a second there. Um, and then it tossed me again when I thought about, hey, we wouldn't have this in the original manuscript. But that doesn't mean that there wouldn't be a cesura there. And that cesura there would, um, would allow us to have that terminal E, which would fill out the line. So um, for those of you that have studied meter with me before, um, this should make a little bit of sense. Okay, uh, 2182. For trust is where the Duke's earls king is, were gathered in this noble compania, for love and for increase of uh, chivalry. About this king, or king, yeah, we don't need to knick it, right? About this king, they'll run on every part, for many a tam leon and la part. 
for many a Tama Leon and Lepart. See, I almost want to like count on my fingers here, but I'm just going to go. For many a Tom Leon and Lepart. On in this week, these lords all in Soma, been on that Sunday to the city coma. A bolt, a bolt prim, a bolt prima, on in the town a leaked. So you can see, a bolt prim, on in the town a leaked. So we would suppress the E in about, but not um, prime, which is a time of day. Um, we're getting 9 a.m. here. It's actually between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. And it was um, related to church services. The, the first church services of the day um, after matins uh, were called prime. And this is where they're getting this from. But it's a deeper dive than maybe we need to do right now. Okay. Um, 2190. This Theseus, this Duke, this worthy Knikta, when he had bought them to his city, the in and in it him, average in his degree, he fasted him and do so great labor to aisen him and don him all honor, that yet men weeneth that no manas wit of no start he could among them eat. The minstrelsy, the service at the feste, the great yeefs to the mystery and lister, the rich array of Theseus' palace, uh, ne who sat first ne last upon the days, what ladies fairest been or best dancing, or which of him can dance and best and sing, ne who most flaying speaketh of love, what hawk sitting on the perch above, lover above, we should be pronouncing that, what hondas laying on the floor adorn, of all this mak e now no mansion, but all the effect that thanketh me the beste. Now cometh the point, and hearken if you lester. Okay, and I think we're dying for the point, right? Um, you'll notice we eventually get to that occupatio again, um, but the description is pretty thick up until this point, and I, I will talk about this at the end. Okay, 2209. The Sunday nicht ihr uh, began to spring, when Palamon the lark heard sing, although it ne'er not they be ours too, yet the lark sang, and Palamon reeked then with holy heart and with a hair courage, he rose the wind and on his pilgrimage, unto the blissful Cythera beneath, and main Venus, honorable and digni, and in her hour he walketh forth a pass, and to the lists her uh, there her temple was, and on he kneeleth, and with humble chair, the hair to soar he said as ye shall hear. Fairest of fair, O Lady Mean Venus, daughter of Jove and spouse of Vulcanus, though gather in the mount of Citharon, for thick love thou hadst of Adon, have pity on me bitter tears, Sparta, and talk me in humble prayer at thine heart. Alas, in ne have no language to tell the effects near the torments of min hela, min hilt, ne min harms not be rare. I am so confused that I cannot say, but mercy, Lady Breed, that knowest well, be thought and seest with harms that ye fear. Considerest all this in real of my soul, as weasely as ye shall for evermore. Import me, Mikta, the true servant bay, and hold them where always with chastity. On Maki Manaval, so ye may help her, ye keep not of arms for to yelp her, nay, ye nay ask not tomorrow to have victory. Ne renown in this cast, ne vain glory of priests of arms blown up and down, but ye would ha have fully possession of Emily and dear in their service. Fiend though the manner how and in what wesa, so cerveza and wesa. So, cerveza sounds like cerveza. It's not. <laughs> it's not what you're thinking. Twenty-two forty-five. <laughs> He reads it not that it may better be to have victory of him or they of me, so that he have me lady in mine armors. For those so be that Mars is God of armors, your virtue is so great and heaven above that if you least, he shall will have me lova. Above, lova. The temple will he worship evermore, and on the altar where he read or go, he will don't sacrifice and fear is better. And if ye will not so, my lady Sweta, then pray ye thee tomorrow with a spare that Arsita me through the heart a bearer. Then recake not what ye have lost me leaf, though that Arsita win her to his weef. This is the effect and end of me prayer. If uh, me, me love, thou blissful lady, dare. Prayer 
Prayera Deira. Prayera Deira. These couplets are killing me today. Okay, uh, 2261. Juan the Orison was Don of Palamon. He sacrificed, he did, he sacrificed, sacrificed, he did, and that unknown. For piteously with all circumstances, all tell he knocked as now his observances, but at the last the statue of Venus shook, as mad a signet whereby that he took, that his prayer accepted was that die. For though the signet shade a delay, yet wist he well that granted was his boon, and with heart, and with glad heart he went him home full soon. So Venus responds, okay, 2271. The third hour in equal that Palamon began to Venus Temple for to go, uprose the Soma, and uprose Emily, and to the temple of Diana Gan, Gan here, and to the temple, the temple of Diana Gan here. Her madams that she thither with her ladder, for readily with him the fear they had, the incense, the clothes, and the remnant all, the to the sacrifice long and shawl, the horns full of myth, as was the geyser, their lacked nook to do her sacrifice, smoking the temple full of clothes the fire, the assembly with her deb with heart debonara, her body washed with water of a weller, but whole she did her wick e dar not tell her, but e be anything in general, and yet it were a game to her and all, to him that meaneth where it were no charge. But it is good a man being at his larger. Her bricked hair was kemmed, untressed all, a coroner of grain oak cereal, upon her head was set full fair and meta, to fearest of the altar gan she beta, and did her things as men may behold her, and stars of Thebes and these books order. This is one of um, the references in the, uh, the first video, um, Stasius Thebiad. He's, um, He's giving a source. It's not actually his uh, his true source for this. His true source for this is um, uh, Boccaccio's um, Tessita, okay, which we got into in the first video. Um, it's actually common for uh, medieval authors to want a Latin source and um, may, or maybe a French source, but a Latin source would be better. Um, an Italian source like um, Boccaccio's uh, Tessita would not be considered. Um, enough of an authority because it's uh, it's not old enough. In fact, um, when Chaucer is using Il Filostrato for uh, Troilus and Cressida, um, he decides um, to, uh, to cite um, a fictional writer or maybe a writer that um, he heard through maybe a mistranslation. It's actually kind of something critics are arguing right now. Um, but, but a writer named Lollius, who supposedly wrote about this um, entire thing in Latin, and um, this text doesn't exist, but he keeps referring back to this text as if it does. Um, the idea of having a, a Latin text like the Thebiad, or like um, uh, Lollius's um, supposed um, version of Troilus and Cressida, would, um, would give Chaucer more authority um, than, uh, than if he was simply um, getting the information from Boccaccio, or from Petrarch, or from Dante, but that's actually a lot of what he's he's doing here, and he's kind of masking his source. Um, before we, uh, you know, call Chaucer a, um, a plagiarist and a liar and whatnot, um, this is kind of a common thing for the period. Um, we want to have a, a an old source, and in fact, uh, Mallory does the same thing in uh, *La Mort to Arthur*. He's constantly referring to the French book, the French book. He has about fifteen sources if we uh, really look at um, *La Mort to Arthur*, and um, some of them are French, some of them are English. Um, some of the uh, French and English sources actually derive from Latin sources. Some of those derive from Welsh. Um, so, uh, pinning everything down is um, is is pretty difficult. Actually, um, looking at all these sources is something that medievalists do in, in terms of understanding um, how these, uh, these writers were inspired and um, what kinds of uh, transmission old books had as they were being translated and rewritten into new things. Um, but the, again, this is probably more information than you need here. But this is, um, this is a reference to the Thebiad. Uh, keep in mind, um, the Thebiad focuses on Thebes, and we're in Athens. And um, we really only get uh, Theseus at the end of the Thebiad um, conquering um, 
conquering Thebes. Um, most of the Thebiad is about um, the family of Oedipus, Antigone, all that stuff. Creon, who we had in the beginning. Okay, um, 2295. Ah, when kindred was the fear with piteous chera, unto Diana she spoke as ye may hear, or chast goddess of the wood as grana, ah, to whom both heaven and earth and sea is sana, queen of the reign of Pluto dark and ill, goddess of madens, that mean heart hast I cano, or hast cano, goddess of madens, that mean heart hast cano, for many a year, and wost with e the zero, as keep me fro the vengeance and the ira, that Othion a boat cruelly. Shast goddessa, where wolsta that e, desiring to be mad in all me leaf, and never will he be, nor love ne weef. I'm saying be, but it's be. Ne never will he be, nor love ne weef. And I probably am doing this about a hundred times in each of these videos, so just bear with me. Um, if, if I had more time to get these together, I swear the pronunciation would be a lot better. I'd get to rehearse a little bit. Um, but again, this is quarantine time. We're just doing the best that we can here. Uh, 2307. Iam uh, lost uh, yet of the compania, amada, and love hunt hunting and venery. And for that's like almost straight out of the monk's prologue. Anyway, and for to walk in the wood is weird, and not to be weef and bear with chill. Not will I canoa compania of man, nor hate me lades sit ye may and calm, for though three forms that thou hast in thee, and Palamon that hast switched love to me, and egg arsita that love me so sore, this grass I pray, I pray thee without and more, I send love and peace betwixt them two, and from me turn away their heart is so, that all here love, uh, here, uh, that all here hot love and here desire, and all he'll busy torment and he'll fear be quaint or turned in other plaza. And if so be, the wood not do me crassa, or if me destiny be sharp and so, that ye shall need us have one of them too, ascend me him that most desireth me. Behold, goddess of clean chastity, the bitter tears that on me cheekest fall, seeing thou art mad and capable of us all, me maddenhood thou cap and will conserve, and queer I leave, and while he leave, a madder, he will be server, and we will leave a matter. He will be server. Yeah, that's breaking me up there. And we on wheel he leave a mod. He will be server. Yeah, the terminal e on made should be suppressed. sitting here counting on my fingers and I still can't get it. And while I live, I would serve you as a maid. Or I desire to serve you as a maid. And while I live as a maid and I will serve thee is what they have down there. Okay, we get the idea. Uh, 2331. The fields brim upon the altar clara, while Emily was uh, was thus in her prayer, but suddenly she saw a seat quinta, for Rick the known one of the fairest quinta, He's literally rhymed the same thing with, okay. And quick the gun, and after that anon, the other fire was quint and all agone. And as it quint, it made a whistling, and done this with bronze in her brenning. And at the bronze end, out ran anon, as it were bloody drops many on, for which so sore aghast was Emilia, that she was well ne mad and gone to Crea. For she ne wist what it signified, but only for the fear that hath she creed. And weep that it was pity for to hear, and therewithal Dian gan appear, with bow and hand, rigged as a huntressa, and said, Doctor, stint thine heavy messa, among the goddess hay it is affirmed, and be eternal word written and confirmed, thou shalt been wedded unto one of thou that han for thee so much of care and woe, but unto which of him he may not tell her, farewell, for he ne may no longer dwell her. The theaters which the bin on me and author Brenna shall they declare in that thou go henna, the adventure of love as is the cas. And with that word the arrows and the cas of the goddess a clatter and fast and ring, and forth she went and made a vanishing, for which this Emily astonished, astounded was, astounded was, and said, What amount of this, alas, 
He put me in thy protection, Dian, and in thy disposition, and home she goeth anon the next where. This is the effect there is no more to say. The next or of Moors following this, Arsatel unto the templed walk it is, of fierce Mars doing his sacrifice, with all the ricks of his paean wisa, with piteous hurt and high devotion, ricked thus to Mars he said his orison. O stronger God, that in the rain is colder, of thras honor art and lord ye holder, and host in every rain and every lawn, of arm us all the breedled in thine heart, and him fortunest as them this divisa, accept of me me piteous sacrifice, if so be, that me youth may deserve, and that me meet be worthy for to serve the Godhead, that ye may be of thine, then pray ye thee to rue upon me pain. For thilke pain and thilke hot fear, in which thou will embrendest for desire, when that thou useth the beauty of fair young fresh Venus spray, and hottest here in arms at thee will, although thee once a time this feeler, when Vulcanus had caught thee in his lass, and found thee leaning by his wee alas. For thilke sorrow that was in thine heart, have rue as well upon the pain as smarter, I am young and unknowing as thou wouldst, and as I throw with love offended most, that ever was any creature, any livest creature. That's a fun word, creature. <laughs> For she that doth me all this woe endure, and he wretched never where he sick or fled, and well he would, ere she may mercy hate, he would with strength win her in the plaza, and will he would without an help or grass, of thee ne may me strength not devala, then help me, Lord, tomorrow in the batala, for thilk fire that Willem brent thee, as well as thilk field uh, now brenneth me, and do that ye tomorrow have victory. Mean be the travail and thee in the glory, that temple, the sovereign temple, will he was, will he most honor him of any place, and always most labyrinth. Of any place and always most leveran, in the reverence and in thy craft is stronger, and in the temple he will me banner, my, me banner hunger, and in the temple he will me banner hunger, and all of the arms of my company, and evermore unto the day he dear, uh, eternal fear he will before thee find, and ache to this avow he will me binda, me build, me hair that hungeth long ago. That never yet ne felt of Edsion of Ras or nor of share, he will thee ye, and being thy truest servant will he live. Now, Lord, have wrought upon me sorrow sore, uh, give me victory, I ask thee no more. The prayer stint of Arsa to the stronger, the rings on the temple door that hung and ache the doors clatter and full faster, of which Arsa to somewhat him magasta, the fear is brendan upon the art of Britta, and it gone all the temple for to litter. Actually, it's Brichta and Lichta. A sweat smell the ground and on of Yath, on the Arsita and on his hand up, yath, up, up half, and more incense into the fear he cast her, with other ricks more, and at last the statue of Mars begun his hauberk ringer, and with the sound he heard a murmur ringer, for lo and dim, and said thus, Victory, for which he yath to Mars honor and glory, and thus with joy and hope well too far, are sita anon unto his in his far, as fain as foul as is the brick to sona. And reeked anon, switch strife, there is begona, for thilke granting in the heaven above, betwixt Venus, the goddess of love, and Mars, the stern god army potenta, that Jupiter was busy it to stenta, till the pal Sartanus the colder, that knew so many of Avengers older, found in his old experience and art, that he full soon hath pleased every part. As soon as Seda, Eld, Eld hath greater avantage, in Eld is both wisdom and usage. Men may the old a train and nocked a trader, Saturn anon to strafe and to stint and strafe and dreader, albeit that is again his kinder, his kinder, albeit that it is again his kinder, of all his strafe he gan remedy finder. Okay, so we get the idea that stopping strife is against Saturn's um, disposition, his natural inclination. Um, this requires a little bit of a dive into medieval astrology, which is actually the assignment um, for today. 
And um, if you look in Canvas, you'll get a little bit more information about that. But um, I'm asking you guys to research a few terms from medieval astrology. Um, you can kind of pick and choose from the list, and I want you to be able to, um, uh, to post those definitions. I think I've got it set up for a discussion board so that we can actually share what we find. Um, if it's not set up like that, I'll fix that in Canvas pretty quickly here. Okay, so we're coming, we're coming to the end of this thing. Um, so how is this exactly going to work? Well, um, for starters, this is probably um, this is probably the densest section of the Knight's Tale because we have so much symbolism in the um, the altars that a, a Theseus constructs um, about these lists. So if we've forgotten what lists are, the lists are the area where these uh, these knights that are joining Palamon and Arsita. Um, are going to do their tournament, and they're also where um, uh, we're going to have stands erected for people to watch the tournament. So um, this is a really big deal. We're, we're holding a tournament for the hand of a lady. Um, as um, the knight says, any knight in England today would go to this tournament, would want to fight in this tournament, because this is basically a, a, a romantic um, <laughs> a romantic knight's dream, right? You're... Um, you're going in there and you're you're fighting for honor and glory for love. This is exactly what um what Fina Moore or courtly love is all about, right? Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting at the beginning, as um, we're getting into, really, I guess this isn't the beginning, but actually, this might not even have happened yet. Yeah, I guess I guess it did. Um, I've read this too many times. Um, we get into like the different kinds of um, armor that everybody is wearing. And um, we're going to get more of that later, obviously, but it's it's been contemporized, right? Um, Chaucer makes the uh, remark, or through the knight, really, the knight makes the remark, the old fashions are the new fashions. Um, there's even a Prussian shield in there, right? Um, <laughs> this is supposed to be ancient Greece. Um, we're not going to have um, Prussian shields, but what we would have a lot of if we were dealing with um, uh, temples um, and uh, altars, we would have um, a lot of references to um, known mythology because this is a religion. And as we get into these different altars, there is so much symbolism. But a lot of these symbols actually reference um, different stories from Greek mythology. Some of them Chaucer through the night kind of paints the picture a little bit. Some of them he just kind of expects you to know. It would be absolutely exhausting to go through every single one of these um, and if we were doing this in class and we had like a month to go over it, um, physical class, I mean, um, then, then yeah, I would probably outline all of these or I would even give you guys um, an assignment to, uh, to go and uh, research these illusions and then present them uh, so that we, uh, we can pick through each and every one of these. Um, but what I kind of want to focus on here, because I feel like we've spent some time with Greek mythology and we should know a lot of these stories that are being referenced. I want to focus on how um, people in the Middle Ages are kind of taking um, Greco-Roman mythology and they're also taking ast uh, astro astronomy or astrology or cosmology. All of these terms are actually correct in their time, um, although there, there might be a, a distinction that is not like the distinction that we have today between astronomy and astrology. But essentially, um, astronomy, we're looking at the stars. Astrology, we're looking at how the stars impact our lives. But it's all connected because they, they basically think of these gods um, as, a, as planets in the classical world. And um, in the medieval world, they are still using this kind of science to try to predict um, what's going to have in their lives. And, um, and then we get to Saturn. Um, Saturn has the, the biggest orbit of any of the so-called stars or planets that they, uh, that they know about. Um, they haven't discovered, uh, Pluto yet. They haven't discovered, uh, Neptune yet. Um, and, and Saturn is, um, to, to make his name Greek, he's Kronos. He's the, uh, the father of Zeus. Um, we have the, uh, the Roman idea that it's not, um, Uranus who is, um, the direct father of Venus or Aphrodite, it is, um, it is Saturn or Cronus. Um, she is conceived through um, his castration when his 
uh, genitals are thrown into the sea after Jupiter or Zeus cuts them off. This is why um, he's referring to her as his, uh, his daughter here on 2354. Um, although um, in, in classical mythology, Jupiter or Zeus generally gets the credit for being, um, for being her father, and um, Saturn or Cronus gets the credit for being her, uh, her grandfather. Um, but it's, it's weird because we have this um, unusual birth. There's also another myth that um, gives us the idea that um, Aphrodite is the, uh, the daughter of Zeus and Dione, and um, Plato's Symposium gets into the idea that there are basically two Aphrodites, and there's two different genealogies, and one is for hetero love, and one is for um, homosexual love. And um, the Symposium gets way into that. Um, I don't want to get into all <laughs> all that today, but um, it's it's kind of a contested birth situation. Um, so on twenty three, or excuse me, twenty four or fifty three, where Saturn calls Venus his daughter, um, that is one way of looking at it. Um, the The footnote in my Norton says no, but it's it's a little imprecise, I guess. Okay, um, so we got these three temples. We have the, uh, the Temple of Venus, we have the Temple of Mars, and we have the, uh, the Temple of Diana. Diana, you guys know better, is Artemis. Um, Artemis is the goddess of the hunt. Um, she has um, women who are uh, um, basically uh, lifelong virgins who worship her. She's also a goddess of childbirth, um, amongst many other goddesses in classical mythology that kind of get that name. Weirdly, in Roman mythology, they eventually incorporate Isis, and she gets in there too, but I digress. Um, so uh, there is a relationship here between Mars and Venus. There is an astrological relationship, which is what I'm asking you guys to look at in the uh, assignment on Canvas, but obviously there's a, a mythological relationship as well because Mars and Venus are lovers. We get the idea that they were caught in Vulcan's net or Hephaestus's net. You guys should be familiar with that, um, that myth. Um, earlier is an illusion. It's uh, the one time um, Arsita says that um, things go amiss between Venus and Mars. Um, and then we've got uh, Diana, who basically is all about women remaining free and not having to be married. Um, but if they do have to get married, she looks after them in, uh, in childbirth. And of course, um, in her temple, we're going to have um, images that represent what she is about. In Venus's temple, uh, images that represent what she is about. And some of them are not very nice, right? Um, jealousy, for example. Uh, we get into a... Um, Mars's temple, and we've got some really nasty images in there as well. Um, and interestingly, if we go and we look at the um, the laundry list of uh, stories in the Wife of Baths prologue that uh, Jenkin is reading to uh, Allison from the Book of Wicked Wives, um, some of the uh, um, the imagery is the same uh, between these um, temples of Venus and Mars. Um, of course, uh, if we remember the Wife of Baths prologue. Jenkin is um, identified with a uh, uh, Hermes because he's a clerk, right? Um, so uh, he's he's a different being altogether, right? Um, but Venus and Mars, the lover and the warrior, they're supposed to get along. Uh, Saturn, the old castrated grandfather figure, um, is supposed to make trouble, and and this is an astrological situation that I'm asking you guys to research and report on a little bit. Um, we have uh, Jupiter, or Zeus, um, who is usually um, kind of the peacekeeper unless he is making trouble himself, but that's usually through his own adultery, which is not going on here. And, and basically we've got the stars and the gods fighting in heaven about how this whole thing is going to go down. Um, and the other thing that's telling is we have these different characters who are... Um, who are visiting these different gods, you'll notice they're doing it at a certain hour as well. This also has to do with astrology and astronomy. Um, there are uh, times in the star charts when it is uh, most feasible to pray to certain gods um, or certain planets. Um, and we're, we're taking this as gods because this is classical, this is pagan in scare quotes, right? Um, so we got Palamon. And I think it's really important that Palamon actually 
sees Emily first in Chaucer's version of the story. Palamon goes to Venus, and he basically wants Venus to fix everything. Um, and um, he doesn't care if he wins the battle, he just wants to get the girl. Okay? Um, we've got Emily, who doesn't want either one of these guys. Um, she wants them to stop fighting over her and to just give up. Um, and um, Diana basically shows up and says, hey, that's not going to happen. Um, I can't tell you who it's going to be. Um, Emily does pray for the guy that loves her the most, if it is going to be um, one of them. Um, that's what's most concerning to her. And then we've got Arsita, who comes third. Um, and it's interesting that we have Emily positioned in between the two. Um, this is done not only for um, the purposes of astrology, because of the times that we would pray to these different gods based on their star patterns or planet patterns, um, but also um, because it structurally puts her in between these two men, which is what all this is about, right? Okay, Arsita comes last. Okay, Mars says victory. Um, so how can a... How can everybody, uh, how can everybody kind of win here, right? Okay, Emily is saying, I want the guy that loves me the most if I'm stuck with a guy. Venus um, shakes to acknowledge to um, Palamon that his prayer has been received and she's going to get to work. Okay, and Mars says victory. Um, we know that the person that wins the tournament is supposed to get the girl. But then we've got Saturn showing up, okay? And, um, and Saturn basically is going to fix the problem, which is against, again, his nature, because he usually is there to make problems, okay? Um, he is kind of an interesting introduction here on 23, or 2453. I keep getting that wrong. Number 23 haunts me anyway. Okay. Me dear Dr. Venus, quote Saturn, me course that hath so we the fortuna hath more power than what any man. Mean is the drenching in the sea so wan. Mean is the prison in the dark cota. Mean is the strangling and hanging be the throat. The murmur of the churlish rebelling, the groveling and the privity imprisoning. I do vengeance and plain correction. Will he dwell in the sign of the leon? Okay, so you see how we're getting into astrology here. When I'm in the zodiacal sign of the lion, I exact vengeance. Okay, um, so we're, we're combining our understanding of Greek mythology here now with um, what we would consider the horoscope to kind of get how these gods are acting on uh, the mortals. Okay, it's a little bit different than what we're used to if we're just looking at Greek mythology. Okay, uh, 2463. Mean is the ruin of the he hollers, the falling of the towers and of the wallers upon the, uh, upon the minor, minor, upon the minor or the carpenter, a slow Samson shocking the player, and mean be the maladies colder, the dark treasons and the cast older, me looking is the father of pestilence, now weep no more, isha dun diligence, uh, that Palamon, that is thine own knicht, shall have his lady, as thou hast him heat, though Mar shall help his knicht, yet natheless, betwixt you there mot be some team pace, all be ye knocked of complexion, of own complexion, of one complexion, of one temperament. Okay, and again, there's also the idea that the stars govern the humors, and the wife gets into that as well. Um, it's this big, connected, scientific system that is kind of difficult to understand for us today because we have real science, right? Their science has um, some science to it, some superstition to it, and it goes back to um, the Greeks and the Romans. Um, they're still working through all this um, at the time of uh, Chaucer's writing. Uh, 2476, that call us all thy switch division, uh, I am thine ale, uh, ready at the will, weep, no, and, and ale is grandfather, uh, weep now no more, he will the lust fulfill. So you'll notice he's two different roles here. Okay, and again, I don't think that's necessarily wrong, considering how Venus is born. And he's speaking to Venus at the beginning here, but we get the idea that Venus is going to have her way, Palamon's going to get the girl, Palamon saw her first. Remember, in Boccaccio's version, Arsita saw her first. So that kind of changes things. Okay, but Mars is still going to get to grant his victory. Um, and uh, Diana um, gets to intercede uh, for her, um, uh, for her um, devotee, Emily. And basically, um, the guy who loves her the most is supposedly the guy that's going to get her. So everything is supposed to work out. We have to get all these gods together to make this happen. 
Okay, and the stars have to align for this to happen. Um, this is the way they thought about um, the cosmos. And uh, before we, uh, you know, try to say that Chaucer wasn't thinking like this and that Chaucer is um, thinking that a lot of this is superstition because of the way that he handles it with um, um, Alison and the Wife of Bath's prologue, um, we have to remember that Chaucer also wrote um, for his, uh, um, his son um, the uh, Treatise of the Astrolabe. And an astrolabe is an instrument that's all about measuring um, what's going on with, uh, with heavenly bodies and um, figuring out their ascendance and trying to predict um, what's going to happen uh, based on um, star and planet patterns. Okay, um, and I was looking in my head for the, uh, the name of the sun, and it's Lewis. Um, and I think um, maybe in the other video I got into Chaucer's relationship with Lewis, but Lewis was probably, um, Lewis was probably a bastard, um, not by uh, Philippa Chaucer, but by um, Cecily Champagne. Um, if you're interested, hit me up on Zoom and we can talk about Chaucer's uh, supposed raptus, um, which at the very least was probably an um, infidelity against his wife that may have resulted in a child, for which he wrote a treatise about astrology. Um, so uh, combine this with the way that Chaucer handles astrology in Troilus and Cressida, or Troilus and Cressida, um, and um, we get the idea that uh, Chaucer... Um, despite what he does in the Miller's Tale with um, astrology, um, does subscribe to some of it. Okay, uh, 2479. Okay, and this is the knight speaking uh, again. No will a stenton of the goddess above, of Mars and of Venus, goddess of Lova, and tell you plainly as he can the great effect for which that he begun. Okay, and this, this ends the third part. So, um, Again, the assignment is to do a little bit of research into astrology. Um, and again, it would be completely um, an exhaustive effort to go through every single beautiful detail in the, uh, the different temples. We have to look at them almost more as paintings um, in order to, um, to kind of understand visually what this is supposed to be like. Um, but essentially, uh, Chaucer through the night is trying to cram as many illusions as he can about these... Um, these different gods into their um, uh, temples. And just like he is doing with the um, characters in the general prologue, um, he is giving us a good aspect on the one hand and a bad aspect on the other. He's asking us as readers to basically interpret um, whether Venus is good or bad, whether Mars is good or, uh, good or bad, whether Diana is good or bad, if we can even um, use these labels, right? Um, but we definitely get what these gods are about from all these different images in there. And there are, there are parts of love that are great. There are parts of love that are not so great, right? There are parts of war that are, um, at least in literature, considered great. Um, you know, the glory and the honor and the, the chivalry, right? Um, but uh, there's also parts of war that are just brutal. And, um, and Chaucer manages to, uh, to work those in. And we also get, um, you know, things like murder, um, things like uh, jealousy on, uh, on Venus's part, right? Um, so it's, uh, it, it's kind of interesting that we see these different um, gods as gods, but then we kind of see them as planets, and we see their, their astrological influence on everything. Okay, and it's Saturn who is the, uh, um, the melancholic planet or the melancholic god. Um, some of you know exactly what that means because you've done research on this. He is the one that is actually going to make everything work out so that the gods are happy. Obviously, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the mortals are happy. Um, so I'll put this question to you, and I'm going to end the video with this. Um, how is it that uh, the Palamon can win the girl but not win um, the, uh, the tournament? And how is it that um, Arsita, if he wins the tournament, doesn't necessarily get the girl? Um, it's almost like, and this is before Macbeth, but it's almost like the prophecies in Macbeth with the witches where there are loopholes. There's got to be some loophole in here, right? Um, and I'm going to ask you guys about this uh, maybe on Tuesday when we get into the Zoom meeting. Um, before you read part four, um, how can this shake out so that um, the gods are all happy? Obviously, um, things are not looking so good for Arsita. Um, he gets the victory. Mars said this, and we're going to keep this but he's not going to get Emily. Um, 
how does this end up happening? Okay, stay tuned.